As Americans continue to process the deadly day on Capitol Hill that started with objections by some Republican lawmakers to today's Electoral College vote count, certifying the victory for President-elect Joe Biden, the question remains, what's next? With two weeks to go before Inauguration Day. Joining us now to talk about it is Austin Choi Fitzpatrick, Associate Professor with USD. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Well, so where do we go from here? We're just six days into 2021, and we have this attack on the Capitol by pro-Trump supporters. You study both social movements and protests. What, what's to be learned by what we witness play out today? Well, the first thing is, for those of us who are hoping for a calmer 2021, regardless of our political backgrounds, that's clearly not how we're entering this new year. I think that the next couple of weeks are going to be really crucial for the GOP as Republicans consider how exactly to play the next couple of weeks in anticipation of a House, Senate, and presidency that are all controlled by Democrats. So the question then becomes, you know, what happens to these unlikely allies that Trump came to office with, who some of whom we saw today at the Capitol? Are they going to be silenced if more traditional and mainstream Republicans um, align with the sort of more conventional politics as we've known them over the last few decades? Or is there a rump GOP that sort of splits off as we saw a hundred and some odd um, members of the House of Representatives do this evening? and then essentially engage in a separate set of politics than those that might be championed by more mainstream GOP candidates. None of this is new, but what we're seeing right now is an acceleration of that conversation at a series of critical junctures. Who's calling Trump? Who's, who, who will then answer the phone and recommend uh, sort of next paths of action to him? And who will support him if he decides to do something that is less popular with mainstream sort of party party folks. And I think that spells a real a real potential crisis for the GOP moving forward. And what about when Congress reconvened tonight to finish the business of a day? Was that an important message to send to the world and the country at large, considering what we saw? I think absolutely. I mean, I, I, I'm watching the world watching this alongside everybody else in America. And it's been uh, embarrassing, of course, to see these uh, you know, hallowed halls um, that are that are essentially laid bare to folks who have, who have entered into the Capitol. The question becomes what happens next? And so I think the political symbolism of entering and actually moving quickly uh, in both houses, both chambers, um, is critical because it sends a message both to the country and also to the world that uh, despite a setback, this is not a process that is going to be to be stopped. And I, this is something that, I mean, regardless of your politics, this is something that's important for international markets, important for foreign affairs and foreign policy and our relationships with other, other sovereign nations. And so I think it was a very important, just to your point, a very important so then gesture. what is Joe Biden's role in all of this? He is facing a pandemic and economic crisis. And, and clearly this is a crisis as well as we saw today. So what do you believe he has to do when there's a huge chunk of the country that believes the election was stolen? Just a few small miracles. Just unite the country. It's going to be easy. I, I shouldn't just because it really is true. This is an incredibly difficult challenge that he has ahead of him. And I don't know to what extent the answer lies with just one person. I can't help but feel that in a lot of ways the burden lies at our feet as Americans. And maybe this country needs, I don't know, maybe a few New Year's resolutions and we ask ourselves, what kind of people do we want to be moving into this new year? And I can't help but think we could learn something from the Beatitudes and essentially ask what a caring and compassionate country would look like. We're in the middle of, and I'm just repeating something you just said, we're in the middle of a public health crisis of sort of epidemic proportions. Um, we've got rising inequality that is hurting people of all backgrounds. We have a challenges to democratic norms and institutions. We have unchecked corporate um, sort of greed. And these are all the sorts of challenges that call not for one clear clarion call from one person, although I think that is important. And but House, House the, Speaker Nancy the, Pelosi, the, how, right. not to step on you, but House Speaker Nancy Pelosi uh, did say tonight she hopes this serves as an epiphany leading to some of the things that you said. you think that's possible? I think epiphany is, uh, if, if we had those, we wouldn't be in so many of the challenges we're in today. But I think epiphany is a, is a strong word. I think it's going to take hard work. And so I would like to think that this was a moment when folks are getting an opportunity to ask themselves, 
what is this country doing? Who are we? Where are we headed? What do we want to be like? And we and if, and hopefully we then dig deep, and we find our better the angel, better angels of our nature. And I think we saw that from the floor of the of the Senate as I was watching this evening calls that essentially are, articulate one theme, which is left, right, you know, regardless of where you fall in the political spectrum, as a country. This is a country that's overcome obstacles, and in a lot of ways, we're, we're better than this. And so I would like to think wherever that call comes from, it's heeded by the American people. All right. Well, hopefully that starts in earnest tomorrow. Thank you so much, Austin Choi. Pat, uh, Fitzpatrick from USD Associate Professor. Professor, we certainly appreciate your time and insight. Thank you.